So hey guys, uh, my name is Mira Horvath. Uh, I am a, a senior technical artist at Bohemia Interactive in a Prague office. And today I'm going to talk about uh, game develop, uh, sorry, game asset uh, production uh, pipeline for our recently released uh, project called Armory Forger. So uh, the topics. Uh, after introducing myself, uh, Bohemia Interactive and Fusion Technology, I will go through some uh, game, uh, game dev uh, technicalities. Uh, so even for non-gamers or non-game developers, uh, is this talk uh, easy uh, to follow? Uh, after that, I will go, uh, or uh, after that, uh, we will have a look at uh, how Blender is used uh, at Bohemia Interactive. I will give a quick uh, uh, insight uh, to game asset creation process uh, for Armory Forger and uh, what's and Fusion Blender tools uh, and its features. So um, <laughs> let's start. <laughs> uh, I've been using Blender since well this graphical user interface. It's uh, year 2005. Uh, I actually got to Blender because uh, it had its own ga game engine. It's simple as that. Uh, same as Martin's. <laughs> uh, since I joined uh, Bohemia Interactive uh, in uh, 2007, I also started uh, scripting with Blender's uh, Python, a Python API. And uh, through the years, um, I've been using Blender uh, for various projects, mainly creating a virtual landscape for Arma series or uh, military simulations. So this is actually my... Uh, uh, talk, or I had a talk um, in uh, 2016 here at Blender Conference about the add-on called Blendscape Tools uh, that I developed to help me create virtual landscape landscapes uh, for game and military simulation mil uh, military simulators. Uh, this is actually my third talk uh, at Blender Conference already. Uh, last seven years, I work as a, a technical senior. Uh, uh, senior technical artist, and <laughs> I've done lots of uh, R&D uh, for our new proprietary game engine uh, called Enfusion and the uh, Armory Forge project. I'm uh, also quite uh, active in uh, geometry nodes uh, since the day one, commenting on patches, uh, discussing ideas at DevTalk, uh, testing, uh, making YouTube videos, and here's... Uh, few of my uh, geometry nodes um, experiments. You may know it from my uh, YouTube channel. So this one is um, trying to uh, generate uh, uh, flow maps with uh, Manta flow, uh, together with geometry nodes, get it into um, uh, game engines. Uh, in, I did it for RPG, uh, Godot, and uh, Unreal, I guess. Yeah, this is few more um, few more videos and uh, this is faking a lighter uh, sensor on a self-driving car uh, because I had a time to play with that <laughs> <laughs> okay um, oh not again yeah, and uh, in my free time, I use Blender also for uh, 3D printing stuff and having fun prototyping uh, simple games with my son in uh, UpBG. That's how I pronounce it. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's talk real quick uh, about Bohemia Interactive. Uh, it was founded in uh, 1999. Uh, we have uh, four offices in uh, Czech Republic, uh, one uh, here in Amsterdam and Thailand, and we have around uh, 350 employees. So uh, Bohemia Interactive has under its belt uh, such titles as uh, Original Operation Flashpoint, uh, take, on, uh, take on Helicopters, uh, these, these, are, these were made on uh, or with uh, a real virtuality engine. Uh, Vigor, uh, that one is made with Unreal Engine, Wildlands, uh, that's a Unity engine. Uh, Daisy, also the old uh, uh, real virtuality engine. Uh, a bit combined already with uh, Enfusion. 
and uh, finally, uh, or sorry, well, and of course, uh, Arma series. Uh, um, the last project in Arma series um, is uh, Arma Reforger that was released uh, as uh, early access in uh, May uh, this year. And it's uh, first game fully uh, made uh, with our new proprietary uh, game engine called Enfusion. And uh, Arma Reforger is predecessor uh, to Arma 4, you can see it on, on the timeline. And here is the, here's the trailer. Maybe with sounds, if it is possible. No, <laughs> anyway, let's enjoy it. Uh, so, uh, mentioning all of those, all of those uh, our uh, games, I would like to emphasize that uh, most of our games are heavily focused on modding. In other words, we allow our community to add um, content to games, either it's a new models, textures, gameplay, up to a new open worlds. Uh, for example, Daisy uh, has started as a uh, community mod to end up as a uh, standalone game with its own team of uh, Bohemian Interactive developers eventually. Okay, so uh, let's quickly talk about Enfusion Engine. So uh, two of our own proprietary engines, uh, Real Virtuality and Enforce Engine, got fused into one, and that's our new uh, Enfusion Engine. Uh, uh, the development has started uh, roughly around seven years ago. So, uh, yeah, so these are the games, I already mentioned them, uh, made with um, Real Virtuality. Engine. These are the Enforce uh, engine games: Shades, Alpha Prime Command, uh, Carry Command, and Take on Mars. And uh, this is how um, the main tool looks like. It's called uh, Workbench. So, if I mention Workbench in this presentation, uh, I mean this tool, not uh, Blender's uh, render engine. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, actually, Workbench uh, allows a uh, user to preview uh, whatever game asset, uh, either it's uh, mesh, uh, textures, uh, materials, config files, uh, and it's also uh, a main hub uh, from uh, which users can get to all the editors, like word editor, particle editor, animations, procedural uh, animations, string editor, behavior editor. And Here's just a really short advert of uh, Enfusion's modding capabilities. Okay, so uh, let's go uh, through a very light game dev theory. So, uh, first thing, uh, LODs. You probably may know it if you uh, work in a game dev. So simply put, uh, it's a um, 
uh, mesh decimation uh, to uh, achieve better performance. Uh, in other words, to not render uh, details that can't be seen at a certain uh, distance. So uh, lower the number uh, of LOD, better the quality is. So this is LOD zero, this is LOD five. Uh, each LOD uh, you see is a, a separate mesh uh, that is being uh, replaced by another. And uh, this is nothing like uh, uh, dissol dissolving uh, vertices uh, in real time. Yeah, and, uh, and here um, you, can, you can see uh, the LOD switching uh, in the context of uh, open world. So objects without, uh, without the colored overlay uh, are the most detailed meshes. Uh, red overlay is first load, green second, blue third, and, and so on. Uh, switching is not based only on a distance from camera, um, uh, I mean camera to object, but also on what uh, area a specific object uh, covers on the screen. Therefore, bigger object uh, switches to force LODs uh, later than smaller objects. Okay, another one, uh, it's colliders. Uh, colliders are used in uh, physics simulation and for the best performance, uh, these must be uh, easy to describe um, uh, mathematically. So um, a box can be just a, a diagonal through, through, the, uh, through the box. Capsule is just a um, uh, radius and height, uh, sphere is just the radius, cylinder again, radius and height. Um, uh, uh, and then it's like a convex, uh, convex um, uh, collider. And in some cases, when um, a set is topologically complex, uh, triangle mesh type can be used, but it's, it has to be used wisely. Yeah, and here's a here's an example of uh, how the uh, how the colliders uh, looks like for this specific model. Yeah, and here again uh, you can see how physics physics simulations see um, see the world of colliders. They are uh, color coded, so the blue ones are. Uh, convex, uh, sorry, there, there are triangle, uh, no, blue ones are uh, convex, uh, purple are triangular, and the green ones are box colliders. Yeah, and uh, another one, it's um, uh, occluders. So I hope. Yeah, can be seen. So it, these are planes which basically occlude uh, everything uh, what's behind them. Occlude means not render, so it's again for uh, increasing performance. Here you can see that uh, it can't be uh, placed into the windows because if you would look out of the window, you wouldn't see anything because everything would be occluded. And now you can see, uh, yeah, those bounding boxes. Uh, these are the bounding boxes of uh, every uh, object placed in the, in the uh, open world, which actually got uh, occluded, so not rendered. Okay, let's move on. So shaders, um, shaders you already know from Blender, this is basically a material used on a mesh. In Infusion, we have a plenty of shaders for various uh, games, assets like post processes, uh, objects. Uh, yeah, there are like tree trunk, tree crown, um, terrain objects. Um, a few more for terrain and for water, ocean simulation, and so on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and this is. Uh, this is our most complex shader called multi, PBR Multi that mixes four materials together uh, via masks and plus allows uh, to overlay some VFX layers like dirt and mud. 
as you can see, there's a lot of uh, textures uh, that comes in. I guess for this one, it's uh, uh, 21 textures. Yeah, in our shaders, we use, uh, as I already mentioned, a lot of um, uh, textures and uh, uh, various types of, of textures. Uh, based on the uh, texture type, uh, in other worlds, it's uh, suffix, like in this case, uh, underscore animo. Um, uh, a specific way is then um, a specific way of uh, image uh, channel compression is chosen chosen uh, during uh, conversion. Uh, conversion actually means to convert a source texture, either it's a PNG or TIFF. Uh, into internal format suitable for rendering in uh, real time. In our case, it's uh, EDDS format. And during conversion also, uh, MIB maps are created, uh, what's basically something like uh, LODs for textures. Yeah, and, and this, is, uh, this is the example of uh, NMO texture. It holds uh, information about normals in uh, uh, red and green channels. Metalness uh, information in blue channel and occlusion uh, information in alpha channel. Yeah, there are like, as I said, a few more. For example, BCR that's uh, like albedo, uh, basic color uh, in RGB, and um, alpha channel is uh, roughness. Okay, let's uh, call, uh, talk about uh, what's, what prefab, prefabs are. Uh, so simply put, uh, it's a collection, collection of uh, game objects that are grouped together that you can uh, instance, instance in uh, games world. So um, uh, here we have a, a base mesh of a church so without windows and any uh, doors and any additional stuff inside. Uh, and in the moment we will see uh, what's already a prefab, so it has all the stuff in it and um, it's ready to be instanced. So uh, the advantage of it is if uh, we change something within the, uh, within the prefab, so either we add something or remove something or add some, um, uh, some logic, s some meaning to these objects, uh, uh, those, change those changes um, uh, get uh, applied uh, to any instance of that prefab uh, placed already in uh, in the world. Okay, so uh, yeah, I guess this is this is it for technicalities. Uh, one thing uh, necessary to mention that uh, all these um, uh, technicality uh, all, all these technicalities I've just gone through are specific uh, aren't aren't specific to our engine. Uh, all the aforementioned techniques, te aforementioned, <laughs> aforementioned uh, techniques are used in other engines uh, as well. Uh, just the implementation and usage uh, may vary. Okay, so let's talk about Blender, Bohe uh, Blender at Bohemia Interactive. So we have uh, over uh, 25 uh, 25 uh, Blender users. I haven't counted a uh, few programmers who also are capable of dragging uh, vertices around uh, so they can prepare uh, simple meshes for debugging or uh, testing uh, engines, uh, technology prototypes uh, they are currently working on. Uh, and the rest of the artists uh, uh, are using uh, other 3D packages. Uh, even though Blender is a powerful tool uh, without the add-ons uh, made by Blender's uh, great uh, community. Our game assets creation pipeline would be tedious and time-consuming, so let me thank you um, uh, to developers of these great add-ons uh, we are using. It's very helpful. Yeah, uh, how do we use Blender? So, um, of course, uh, mainly uh, we use it uh, to mesh modeling from small uh, props like patchet tables, beer bottles, uh, to bigger to bigger objects. Uh, let's call these vehicles. 
vegetation and to big structures like um, this church. Oh, okay, not there, but we will get there. So yeah, we also use um, um, Blender as a uh, asset quality assurance tool, but I will talk uh, about it a bit later. So we use also Blender to make uh, compositions of our assets and uh, render them as images for, uh, for example, this is from uh, Refor Arma Reforger website. Our uh, video team uh, used it to render some scene uh, for trailers uh, as well. Here's a short uh, shot from a bigger trailer. And here from a daisy trailer, we used a cell fracture add-on and uh, then physically simulated the, the fragments. Also, uh, our operation department does uh, pre-visualization of offices uh, before uh, reconstruction actually happens. Yeah, and this is uh, set up from another office. Yeah, and also uh, we do some pre-visualization of, uh, of merge. So I, as a technical artist, do a lot of uh, technical research with Blender. Uh, you could al already s see something in, um, uh, in the video uh, at the beginning. And uh, in the future releases of uh, Arma Reforger, would, we would like to, or we will also bring uh, buildings, this destruction. Uh, so currently I'm prototyping um, geometry nodes power tool to help us cut uh, buildings, assets into fragments. Yeah, so let's talk about um, game asset creation process. Typically process is uh, modeling high-res meshes, making UVs, and then making LODs uh, out of the, the high-res one, and uh, doing or making um, other supportive meshes like I already uh, showed you colliders, occluders. Uh, when creating uh, LODs, uh, we don't use uh, decimate uh, modifier at all as it's quite unpredictable and uh, especially with objects uh, uh, where sil silhouette uh, must remain constant through, through LODs. Uh, oops, I've, been, I've been also told by um, our artist that uh, decimate uh, modifier uh, breaks UVs. So instead of uh, using decimate, decimate uh, modifier, artists uh, dissolve vertices and, um, and edges. So good old uh, manual labor to make. Allow this optimize as much as possible. So our uh, uh, artists have to set up uh, uh, objects before exporting to Enfusion. Uh, uh, for example, to let Enfusion uh, engine to recognize LODs objects uh, within uh, FBX. Uh, they has to be named uh, with uh, suffixes or prefixes. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, prefix are for uh, colliders, suffixes are for uh, LODs. Also, they uh, have to config, uh, configure collider. So each collider, uh, is co each collider must have its uh, game uh, game materials, uh, as we call it, uh, assigned. And that defines, uh, for example, what sound to play when hit, uh, what particles to emit, or what uh, bullet holes uh, decals to place where bullet hit uh, the collider. Uh, another thing. Uh, you, uh, another thing we set up is layer presets, uh, which uh, defines um, what objects uh, to collide with. So here you can see uh, there's a wood dot game mat. Yeah, and after uh, this is all done, artists should do validation, uh, but that not the case in every case. 
So uh, uh, also, uh, they sometimes don't do it, but they may also do a, a, a mistakes like uh, uh, mesh having bad topology. So there are, um, I call it uh, zero length edges uh, or zero uh, area faces. This may happen during uh, the modeling or maybe uh, using some modifiers. Uh, also, when modeling uh, convex uh, collider, uh, it may happen that actually eventually it's not convex. Uh, or colliders, they're supposed to be uh, closed volumes having uh, non-manifold non edges. Or making uh, typos when uh, naming objects. Uh, yeah, when, duplicate, when duplicating objects, they forget to remove uh, our beloved uh, uh, .001 suffix. Um, uh, this is a problem, uh, as I said, uh, because when importing FBX into N, um, uh, Infusion Engine, uh, this Z, uh, dot zero zero gets uh, behind the LOD, so it's not recognized then as the LOD. Oh yeah, and uh, the same problem with uh, 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 dot zero zero one uh, kicks in also when uh, importing assets made in Autodesk products uh, that allow um, to name several objects by non-unique name. Anyway, uh, when, confi uh, when uh, configuring uh, colliders, uh, they may also do typos or completely to forget uh, uh, to, for example, fill the layer presets. Uh, that's a custom property. And um, how we help to overcome uh, these problems, I will be uh, talking in a moment. Oh, yeah. I even have a screen a picture of it. Yeah, and, and after validation, this is allowed to export to FBX. <laughs> FBX. So uh, we use uh, FBX as a main exchange, main exchange format uh, among all 3D tools uh, we use in Bohemia. And we also use it to import stuff uh, into Infusion. Uh, to, during the production, <laughs> Uh, we also had to solve some problem um, how different uh, 3D tools uh, manage the uh, manage normals. Uh, every uh, everyone does it a little bit like dif differently. So um, to have all of our assets uh, shaded uh, properly without any visual glitches, uh, we use uh, weighted normals modifier in all uh, 3D packages. Maybe it's not uh, called the same one, uh, the same as, uh, in all of them. And yeah, uh, weighted normals also led us to avoid uh, of making additional edge loops uh, for better smoothing, thus decreases poly count, and that's what we want for real time. And yeah, FBX lifecycle. So, um, we have to be able to open any asset store in um, stored in FBX in any 3D software uh, by our artist. Uh, because, for example, uh, one does a model in um, Blender, and let's say this manager uh, needs to do review in Maya, for example, or happens that. Um, uh, artist leaves a company and someone else has to overtake this asset and he uses completely different uh, application. Uh, yeah, so this is the life cycle. And um, as you may already guess, it's not always a, a painless process. It hurts. Uh, so um, what happens? Uh, Autodesk users uh, using groups and layers uh, lose them if FBX is resaved uh, with Blender or vice versa if Blender or Blender user uh, lose collection. Uh, they typically use it for a better organization of, uh, of the scene, uh, especially when there's like really like hundreds of, of objects. In some cases, uh, when using a wrong 
FBX version uh, when exporting from Autodex product, products, uh, custom properties got lost. And, and this was really tricky to fi figure out uh, because uh, these custom properties are, you know, uh, hidden. It's not really visible that they are not there. So we just found out when we imported uh, to Infusion and something uh, wasn't working. Oh, oops. And uh, edit bone. Uh, some of you may know of this phenomenon uh, when uh, importing FBX uh, with skeletons into Blender and exporting it back to FBX Blender adds one bone. And um, then compatibility with uh, Autodesk products is broken. Um, it actually also uh, got broken in, in, in Fusion. Uh, uh, this was uh, this breaking animation thing in Infusion uh, was uh, fixed uh, during uh, or on the side of Infusion during import. But the problem is that um, it's still in this FBX life cycle. So uh, if someone opens uh, the skeleton in uh, Motion Builder, it's broken. Um, for some time, well, internally we use um, better FBX add-on, which solves this. Uh, I would get inspired, but this, uh, this it's actually, well, it's add-on, but it's just an exe file we in, I can't take a look inside. Um, yeah, and oh, yeah. I have my other notes here. <laughs> so um, I would like to mention uh, vegetation uh, creation process because uh, vegetation is um, all vegetation assets were made uh, purely in uh, in Blender. Uh, so uh, when I asked um, our artist uh, why we haven't used uh, other commercial tools for procedural uh, tree uh, creation or generation, uh, back then, um, two, three years when there was um, pre-production, uh, um, they weren't able to cover whole uh, pipeline uh, in one tool. Uh, and in, in Blender, they were, uh, unfortunately, manually, but they were able to uh, do it on time. Uh, yeah, so here's a quick look uh, at how it's, how it's done. So uh, typically, uh, we first bake uh, foliage uh, atlas textures. All these textures are either either taken by by uh, camera or we buy uh, 3D models on the internet and render them. Then uh, then uh, we build uh, 3D branches from those uh, atlases. That's the top right image, and after that we build a whole crown out of these 3D branches. Yeah. Uh, we also experimented with uh, uh, 3D scanning of, of the trunks uh, because um, uh, in a first, uh, first person shooter, uh, when talking about uh, trees, uh, the trunk is, uh, is most visible uh, part from, from a tree uh, because it, player can reach it easily. So that, that's why we pay attention to details at this lower part of trees. Yeah, and when I, when I said that um, uh, this whole workflow uh, was manual, there were actually a few scripts written to, uh, wrote, um, written, <laughs> um, actually, uh, to automate uh, some parts uh, uh, of the development. Okay, and let's move on uh, to Enfusion Blender tools. So, because of uh, previous, pre previously mentioned issues, uh, as well as uh, time consuming and tedious pipelines, we decided to develop a tool. Uh, to increase productivity of our internal internal artists as well as uh, community of mothers. 
and um, M-Fusion Blender Tools, or EBT for short, uh, is a typical Blender, blender add-on in, installed from, uh, uh, from a zip file, and his uh, features can be found here and there. Uh, currently, uh, the add-on is avala uh, available on Steam as part of a uh, workbench uh, or Enfusion uh, tool suite. Uh, currently, most of the features um, are bound to Armory Forger, but uh, once we have uh, more features that would be handy, uh, that would be handy even for uh, Blender community, uh, we will uh, release it probably on a on a GitHub. So let's talk uh, about EBT features. So the first one is a model quality assurance feature uh, that checks um, through every um, uh, game object in the blend file and sorry and uh, reports on uh, objects having uh, invalid uh, data. For example, in the, uh, in this case, uh, uh, usage uh, property. Uh, or the layer presets I mentioned on colliders is uh, empty uh, or um, layer preset name from a predef predefined uh, set, predefined list uh, isn't used. Uh, user can select uh, the object and uh, fix it uh, via object tools. Uh, another feature I will um, get to it uh, in, a, in a bit. And in case a uh, user checks uh, one of those uh, mesh topoli topology checks, uh, besides it reports on objects with invalid, mesh, uh, invalid meshes, it also automatically assigns a mesh validator, uh, which is a uh, geometry nodes modifier that shows uh, issues in real time. Uh, what I mean by re real time, Um, uh, it uh, highlights uh, invalid topology and uh, oh, and it reports how many such issues is present and uh, the cool thing is that uh, you can see uh, how it is being fixed in, in real time so yeah the overlay um, got removed because it was it was fixed in this case it was the uh, non-manifold uh, edges and you can see there's like zero issues. Okay, um, yeah, and uh, um, so a uh, cool thing also about having it really like uh, real time, like uh, changes, changing for example the face area is that uh, besides you can uh, or it can uh, mark though zero, um, zero area faces or uh, zero length edges. Uh, you can basically drag the, drag the slider because sometimes it's not just really all three um, vertices on at one place, but it may be a really, really small one, very small uh, face, uh, but you know, it's invisible because this is really uh, simple geometry, but you know, huge structures are, you, you can't find it there. Uh, so you can basically dr drag uh, drag the, the slider and identify identify um, all the issues, all the cases. So uh, yeah, do, uh, you probably remember um, this one. So um, so this uh, yeah this this issue basically uh, gets um, also uh, checked and reported. Uh, so user user can easily fix it. Otherwise, uh, uh, .001 suffixes would cause, uh, as I mentioned, the problem with uh, LODs recognition during the import. Yeah, batch F, uh, batch FBX export. So uh, when uh, when artist uh, creates a, a, a asset from scratch in Blender. Uh, it typically does uh, the base mesh, uh, as on this uh, picture, and also all the additional stuff. So he has the reference how how big the uh, doors, uh, windows uh, should be. And uh, as you can see on uh, in the out outliner, uh, there's tons of them, and all of these uh, like. Uh, 
base mesh and the um, uh, the additional stuff has to be uh, exported to separate folders to separate uh, FBX files. Yeah, so you can see see it here, and therefore we uh, we added uh, batch export. Uh, batch FBX export, so where user basically just uh, selects the uh, the collection which he would like to export, says the, says the uh, folder and batch export, press batch export FBX and all the FBXs get uh, exported into the folder. Yeah, uh, material preview feature. Uh, this one mimics and fusion shaders I already showed you uh, in Blender to visually assist uh, users while uh, creating uh, a model from scratch uh, or to help uh, creating additional data like baking textures for uh, last LODs and more. Uh, here's a um, uh, example of a PBR basic uh, shader in Blender. So on left there's Blender, on Right, there's workbench, so not workbench in Blender, but our our workbench, uh, and here's uh, PBR, PBR multi. So this is this is how all all the shaders inputs uh, uh, look like. Uh, there's uh, UV uh, UV sets uh, sources transform UV transformation for each texture, um, and so on. Uh, and yeah, this is this is the guts of uh, PBR multi shader. Um, so at, at the beginning, there's uh, masks uh, processing. As I told you, that you're using masks to um, blend all those uh, four uh, materials. Uh, there's uh, color processing, which is basically albedo textures, roughness processing, uh, metalness, and at the bottom. Uh, uh, normal, normal, normal processing or normal maps processing, uh, and at the end, all of this it's uh, plugged into principal uh, BSDF uh, shader. Okay, so um, let me quickly uh, explain uh, why I said uh, um, material preview. Uh, only mimics and fusion shaders, uh, and um, it doesn't give exactly the same uh, visuals and in uh, as in and fusion. So you already know. Uh, also, Martin's mentioned it that uh, we can't write shaders in GLSL and, and compile it. Uh, uh, so we have to do it with a node editor or shader editor. Uh, so therefore, uh, um, it's quite. Challenging task, excuse me. Uh, also, the uh, um, implementation of uh, PBR, it's uh, a bit different, or maybe quite different uh, in Enfusion and also in, in, in Blender. Uh, unfor unfortunately, uh, nodes uh, that would give, for example, uh, uh, gbuffer information uh, are also missing. We use this information uh, for our Decals shader in Enfusion. Also, uh, the way uh, how uh, Blender treats alpha information is uh, a bit different than in Enfusion. For example, alpha test or alpha clip uh, is not allowed in alpha blend mode. You know, it's only available only in alpha clip mode. Um, Uh, oh, okay. Now I'm not sure what is this video about. Ah, oh, okay. I see. Ah, can I stop it? Yeah. yeah. Um, also, uh, actually, uh, another problem is that uh, uh, shaders in Blender uh, use uh, source texture as a as a for, um, source texture formats uh, like um, PNG or uh, TIF, whereas shaders in Enfusion uses um, mm, compressed added EDDS uh, textures, and because of compression, there may be uh, visual differences for it, like for example, on, on, 
this picture. So when playing uh, with alpha clip um, slider, in this case, the same number for alpha testing and uh, multiplication uh, are used, but it gives uh, a bit different result. And also because of all these uh, aforementioned uh, issues, we can't support all infusion shaders uh, parameters uh, via uh, material preview. So uh, uh, as you, can, you could see on the um, uh, PBR multi, the big one, uh, we, we support just a, a small fraction of it. Okay, so uh, let's uh, have a look uh, how we actually get uh, textured or, or the uh, assets uh, with uh, infusion shaders uh, into Blender. So all user needs to do is import asset via our custom uh, FBX uh, import. Uh, here you can see just the reports that uh, some of the uh, materials are not supported, as I uh, mentioned, and also it may uh, it may report that some um, source textures like TIF PNG uh, is missing. You can also see in the outliner that. Uh, uh, custom FBX import also creates uh, dedicated collections based on what meshes are in the FBX. So it creates LODs, collection, colliders, collections. So we, it's easier to uh, navigate in the outliner. Yeah, and uh, uh, via uh, material preview feature, uh, users are also allowed to edit uh, materials uh, imported materials uh, for these custom panels were, were added into the material properties, but uh, editing uh, material properties uh, is only local right now. It means that the changes can be exported uh, back to Workbench, but we're trying to figure it out. Oh, yeah. Uh, but still, user can uh, do the edits in, in Infusion like uh, you can change the UVs on this material uh, and the color on this one. The material has to be saved. And yeah, and then just uh, click the update materials and you can see the changes in UVs and the color. Ah, yeah, and uh, so uh, in case uh, an artist is uh, getting, um, uh, is not getting <laughs> uh, what he expects to get while set setting up shaders, uh, Workbench uh, gives him uh, opportunity to debug uh, what is uh, going wrong with, uh, uh, by switching the uh, debug channels. So we have it in, um, in uh, Infusion, but also in, uh, in Blender. Yes, so this is this was the this was the mask for the masking uh, all the all those four materials on PBR multi. Yeah, uh, last of the texture baking. Uh, so typically, uh, all the upper or maybe lower uh, LODs uh, they use like um, high res textures, but for the last one, uh, the, the worst one. Uh, all the um, all the doors and and windows has to be uh, baked in, in the texture uh, because, as I showed you, like the base mesh base mesh of a uh, charge was just without uh, doors and any additional stuff. And yeah, you can hear it here. Oh, you can see it here. Yeah, this is the this is the prefab with all of them. Yeah, and so um, uh, one of our artists actually found a uh, um, handy usage of material preview feature. So he basically imports all the necessary assets um, in the blend file and uh, uh, bakes it into the texture, uh, into a low res texture. Okay, another feature is uh, terrain import and export. 
So we can import it from um, from Word Editor to Blender, uh, do some changes, and get it back uh, to Word Editor. Uh, and even though uh, our Word Editor has uh, uh, terrain sculpting tools, sometimes we need more precise editing. Um, for example, uh, sticking a, a custom-shaped uh, mesh uh, via geometry nodes. Uh, but this one is stupid one, but here uh, actually you can see uh, that the terrain elevation is split to lanes, each having a certain slope uh, to help testing uh, and configuring um, physical, uh, physical properties of vehicles. Um, in other words, uh, how um, vehicles engine supposed to behave on a certain, certain um, slopes. So this is one of the possible uh, use cases uh, for the uh, terrain uh, import and export. We also support uh, P3D import. Import P3D is a mesh format for a real virtuality engine um, and basically old Arma. Community has made a uh, thousands of assets saved in this format through the years, uh, and they would like to convert their uh, creations into Armory Forger, so they just need to import it, uh, import the P3D files into Blender and uh, set up meshes and export them into FBX. Next one are uh, object tools. Object tools helps uh, quickly sort uh, uh, objects into collections. I already uh, showed you in, um, in FBX import. Yeah, and also, as I mentioned before, uh, colliders uh, have to have um, their properties set up so physics, sounds, particles work correctly when player interacts uh, with game objects. And EBT uh, provides quick way of setting properties um, by retrieving lists of the of the settings from Workbench. I will talk uh, about this retrieving thing in a moment. So here. Um, yeah, so here you can see a list of all available layer presets, and when user picks it, uh, its um, uh, objects gets uh, gets it set via a custom property. And here are the uh, game materials, uh, the hash or unique ID at the end of the materials name helps to pick uh, right. Um, material from a resource database when importing uh, asset uh, into Infusion. Animation export, uh, so um, a user can make multiple animation uh, within blend file, and via EBT he can choose which one, which ones to export at once. Uh, yeah, so uh, we support also uh, export profiles. This basically defines which uh, bones per each animation will get exported. So for example, yeah, you can see, see them here. Uh, for example, user may want to export uh, full body animations or just uh, restrict it uh, to upper body. And we also uh, support the additive animations. A uh, cool thing is that once uh, animation or any asset is uh, registered in Enfusion, uh, uh, it's just about saving it and just yeah, switch to switch to Workbench and it updates, updates automatically so it speed up the, the, the prototyping stage. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned about the retrieving uh, the information uh, from, uh, from Enfusion, uh, in the first uh, version of uh, Enfusion Blenders, uh, Blender tools, uh, we were retrieving all the necessary information by parsing uh, text files uh, the following, uh, this one is um, uh, material or the shader to get all the uh, material properties so we can import them via uh, material preview uh, feature. And this one is meta file uh, that's uh, uh, an infusion mesh, uh, a meta file for infusions uh, mesh object uh, um, among others, among other information. It holds also a mapping of uh, material name in Blender to material used in uh, Infusion, that's the assigned material. 
Uh, and um, this is the list of uh, layer presets we used to fill a drop-down menu. Uh, you, could, you could already see uh, with the settings. Okay, and um, so for the next release of uh, Enfusion Blender tools, we decided to let uh, EBT to communicate with Workbench uh, via a TCP IP protocol. So the way of retrieving data, data is uh, solid and uh, future-proof. Internally, internally, we call uh, this feature Bridge, and uh, it's part of our uh, upcoming release. So it works the way uh, that uh, uh, we send requests uh, from Blender uh, with information what Enfusion uh, script to run and uh, input parameters and Workbench runs the Enfusion script and returns the, the result back. This is how it looks like in Python. So uh, the new way of connecting Blender to Workbench opens uh, new possibilities uh, that we are currently uh, uh, exploring. Uh, here's uh, one of them. This is a map in map in Enfusion, uh, Enfusion's word editor uh, that I use uh, testbed, that I use as a testbed for testing geometry nodes here is the same location in, in Blender. And yeah, by just dragging the density factor, uh, we can uh, generate points that represents uh, trees uh, location and just uh, send them to world editor. Uh, it's basically a um, trivial demo, but you get, you get the point where, uh, or how endless the possibilities uh, uh, opens up. Unnecessary to mention that uh, in Enfusion, uh, in we have uh, great tools to uh, generate forest, roads, uh, even rivers. So this is really just a, a some um, ideas what, what can be done with, uh, for example, geometry nodes and uh, uh, the bridge support. And guys, this is it. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for visiting. Thanks. I'm not sure if there's some time. Okay, it's not. So um, let's meet afterwards.